History has a tendency to repeat itself rather frequently. A similar tragedy involving a prominent cruise liner occurred 100 years after the Titanic met its terrible demise in 1912, placing it second on the list of the most infamous shipwrecks. The renowned Italian cruise operator Costa Crozzeri, a unit of Carnival Corporation, operated the Costa Concordia. It cost a staggering 450 million euros to build it in Fincontieri's Sestri Ponenti shipyard. Since the company started offering passenger services in 1947, it has built a solid reputation and grown to be among the biggest cruise operators in the world. The first ship in the Concordia class, the Costa Concordia, assisted four additional cruise ships, among them the Carnival Splendor. However, the capsizing of one of its flagship cruise ships which had just been in operation for seven years, seriously jeopardized the company's reputation in international sailing. From Savona to Civita Vecchia, the Costa Concordia was transporting passengers on a seven-day voyage. A starboard side collision between the Costa Concordia and an underwater reef occurred on January 13, 2012, not far from the island of Isola del Giglio off the Tuscany coast of Italy. As soon as water entered the electrical panels, propulsion controls and engine room, the ship immediately lost all propulsion and shortly after that, there was a total blackout. The hull of the ship was slashed by the breach, leaving a 60 meter long gash. Because of this, the watertight compartments inside the ship quickly flooded, which finally caused it to sink. Given the availability of cutting-edge technology and instruments that provide exact and thorough information about every possible condition a ship may face, it is difficult to understand how such a catastrophe could occur. All relevant data is readily available with a vessel, including information on turbulent seas, the mapping of the ocean floor, and high-speed winds. On board a ship, one may immediately see the terrain of every region through which the ship travels. Despite all of this, the Costa Concordia sank after hitting an underwater reef off the coast of Giglio Island and came to rest on the rocks close to the shore. This raised an important question, what was the reason the ship was sailing so close to the coast in the first place and ultimately resulted in one of the most tragic accidents in the history of international cruising? The Concordia had to stay at least 1500 feet away from the island because of its deviation path. In actuality, though, the ship came down around 659 meters closer to the shore. Later in the investigative report, it is noted that this egregious mistake was caused by a number of miscommunications between the captain, first officers, and the officer in charge. The ship's turning radius was significantly wider than it should have been in accordance with the chartered deviation because of the wrong heading angles, which ultimately brought the ship quite close to the beach. The ship was already too close and traveling at a high speed of 16 knots by the time the skipper realized the problem and began issuing a series of commands for rudder twists. Concordia had little chance of passing safely as a result of the helmsman's incorrect orders being carried out and the time it took to amend them. What might have been the reason for such a mistake to occur that jeopardized the lives of almost 4,000 passengers on board and radically altered the cruise industry? Prosecutors offered a juicy defense during the subsequent trial for this incident. The married ship captain had piloted the vessel so close to the island in order to impress a much younger Moldo von Dancer with whom he was having an affair. It's debated whether Captain Francesco Chetino wanted to impress his girlfriend. Chetino claims that he insisted that the ship travel close to the shore so that the guests might get a good look and salute other seamen. However, the Italian courts determined that the captain, four crew members, and one representative of the ship's corporation, Costa Crozzeri, a division of Carnival Corporation, were responsible for the accident and hindering a safe evacuation. The accident was completely the result of a succession of human blunders. It was not the fault of unforeseen weather or ship malfunction. Evidence presented at Chetino's trial indicates that while he evaluated the Concordia's damage, he did not put his passengers and crew members' safety first. Captain Francesco Chetino's attempt to hide his activities was also discovered through a taped phone conversation with Costa Crocea's crisis coordinator, Roberto Ferrarini. He misled the audience by stating that the blackout caused the crash, rather than the reverse, because he did not immediately notify the Italian Coast Guard and the Search and Rescue Authority, he was also held responsible for the delay in the rescue. While the ship was sinking, Chetino said to Ferrarini, 
I have made a mess, and practically the whole ship is flooding. What should I tell the press? To the port authorities, I have said that we had a blackout. Ferrarini was eventually held in a trial and found guilty of contributing to the accident by delaying rescue efforts. Additionally, Shetty no delayed informing the Italian search and rescue authority about the incident at around 9.45 p.m. The skull rocks were hit, and it was a person on the shore who first informed the rescue personnel about the ship, citing the investigating report. After 10 o'clock, search and rescue got in touch with the ship, but Shetino didn't let them know what had happened for another 20 or so minutes. After impact, the crew started to leave the ship a little over an hour later. Many passengers said that the evacuation process was chaotic and that they did not hear the alarm to proceed to the lifeboat. The ship was listed so far to starboard during the evacuation that it rendered it nearly impossible to drop the lifeboats on one side and made it extremely difficult to move inside. The crew's po anchor dropping technique made matters worse, substantially worsening the ship's flip over. The captain, amidst the chaos, managed to board a lifeboat ahead of everyone else. Get back on board. The Coast Guard man yelled at him over the phone, a taped quip that was adopted as an Italian t-shirt slogan. After Shetino was brought to court, he brashly used maritime superstitions as a way out, and his attorney referred to the ship as unlucky. He recalled how, during her christening, the champagne bottle was swung against the hull but did not shatter. His attorney had said that the ship was mysterious in every way. He defended his innocence and claimed that his efforts had saved lives during the 19-month trial. The prosecution, however, referred to him as an idiot and accused him of manslaughter for starting the collision, leaving the ship, and holding up rescue efforts. In 2015, Shetino was convicted of manslaughter, causing a shipwreck, leaving the ship without evacuating the crew and passengers, and lying to the authorities about the incident. He received a 16-year prison term. In addition to Shetino, Ferrarini, and Rusli Bin, Cabin Service Director Manrico John Pedroni, First Officer Ciro Ambrosio and Third Officer Silvia Caonica were also found guilty for their roles in the accident. The incompetence and recklessness of the crew caused the vessel to become a wreck, resulting in the deaths of 32 individuals and the safe rescue of 4,200 others. The ship was hauled to Genoa to be disassembled after two salvage companies, Titan and Mika Perry, were contacted four months after the catastrophe. The Costa Concordia shipwreck continues to haunt survivors and islanders after more than a decade. Esther Percosi still perceives the screaming, the chill, and the horror in people's eyes. She is one among few who survived the Costa Concordia disaster. Although less fatal than the notorious Titanic disaster in 1912, this incident led to some changes in the safety regulations for the cruise industry. In a similar vein, the first International Convention for the Safety of Life at Sea Solas was established two years after the Titanic disaster with the goal of preventing another significant incident like the sinking of RMS Titanic by establishing safety standards for both the construction and operation of passenger and merchant ships. Did this catch your interest? Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.